This video is brought to you in collaboration with wowhead.com. Hello everyone. Patch 10.2.5, Seeds of Renewal. It is the long-awaited retaken of Gilneas. Finally, the Worgen get to reclaim their home, lost during the expansion cataclysm. Which time-wise, in-game is around 12 years ago. Well, for us, in real time, the cataclysm released back in 2010. 14 years, give or take. So before we dive into the liberation of Gilneas itself, let's briefly talk about the road that got us here. Gilneas will prevail! Gilneas, one of the older human kingdoms, was part of the alliance of Lordaeron in their war against the invading hordes. While Azeroth was saved, the damage done was incredible. Cities had to be rebuilt, the Dark Portal had to be kept under guard, and the captured orcs were placed within internment camps. All kinds of projects that demanded a whole bunch of gold. King Gen Greymane, ruler of Gilneas, he was not happy with having to invest so much and see so little return. The alliance fractured over time, and the king figured that they needed no alliance. Gilneas was strong enough to take care of itself, so he put up a big old wall to separate them from the outside. A wall that protected them against threats like the Undead Scourge that roamed the land during Warcraft 3, denying any and all calls from former allies to help them out. But while a wall is great to keep problems on the outside, it's also fantastic at keeping them in. The Worgen curse spread quickly amongst the Gilneans, even got to their king. When their wall crumbled with the Cataclysm, the Horde, led by Warchief Garrosh Hellscream, saw their opportunity. Forsaken forces were sent in to claim this territory. Not an easy fight, considering the Gilneans rally behind their royal family and turned the curse into their favor. Fang and Claw fought back with ferocity, but the Dark Lady, Sylvanas Windrunner, would do anything to get the job done. Even despite being told not to by the Warchief, deploying the horrific plague, she would end up confronting Gen, nearly claiming the old wolf's life. Was it not for his son Liam jumping in to take the arrow instead? Father! Liam! No! We did it, Father. We took back our city. We took back. May the light bless the spirits of our ancestors. For well, they've chosen to allow my son to rest upon this holy ground. It is here, surrounded by the heroes and patriots of Gilneas, where he belongs. You were a true man of the people, Liam. Unlike any royal I've ever met, we'll make them pay for this. Gilneas will remember your courage forever, Liam. We'll return, Liam. I swear this to you. The king and his people lost nearly everything that day, as the Gilneans were forced to abandon their home, meaning that the once arrogant proud Gen started out from an extremely low point, having to let go of the shadow of his father, having to accept the help offered by the Night Elves and the Alliance. He helped Varian Rin with overcoming the rage inside, reforging a strong bond between the two leaders. And despite his history, he tried to work together with the Horde on the Broken Shore. The Allegiance lost him a king and a friend, to what Gen saw as the betrayal of Sylvanas and the Horde. With Gen having lost his son, and Enduin losing his father, the two grew close as well. To then have it to see Sylvanas and the Horde burn down Teldrassil, the home of the Night Elves that had saved the Gilneans when they needed it the most. Gen nearly lost his wife Mia to the flames, the genocide of the Night Elves. To then have it to stand there and see Enduin get kidnapped by Sylvanas and taken into the Shadowlands. Now the story of Gen, it's a bit too much to go into full details. Safe to say, the old wolf has quite the history with the Horde, the Forsaken and the Dark Lady. But times have definitely changed. The Horde is no longer led by a warchief, but by a council. All the different races represented and given a voice. Peace between the Alliance and Horde has lost several years now. The Forsaken are no longer led by Sylvanas, but by the Desolate Council. A council consistent of Kalia Menefil, Lillian Foss, Master Apothecary Farinel, Death Stalker, Commander Belmont, and Dark Ranger Velonara, who have promised to relinquish their hold over Gilneas and return it to their people. 
unfortunately. Well, in the midst of abandoning the city and handing it over, nobody expected the Scar the Crusade to show up and just make themselves comfortable. So now we need to retake the city from the Crusaders. I have an Alliance contact meeting us by our boat. We are going ahead of the army to offer our aid. And to ensure we don't take King Greymane by surprise. His dislike of the Forsaken is well known. Watch yourself. Tensions will be high. Kalia Menefeo was killed by Sylvanus in the novel Before the Storm, as they tried to reunite Forsaken with their living relatives. Then she was brought back through the light, the pale lady she's called, instead of the dark lady. At her side is Lillian Voss, who was resurrected by Sylvanus' Valkyr, while at first unable to accept her fate and trying to return to dear old dad and the Scarlet Crusade, she quickly discovered that dad had no love for any undead, not even his own daughter. Instead of being executed, she turned her blades on her former loved ones, went on a crusade against anything related to the Scarlets or Necromancers. Over time, she's warmed up to the plight of the Forsaken, and as members of the Desolate Council, they're trying to help out with the Forsaken find their place in the world. I have little experience with the Scarlet Crusade. They rose to power after we walled off Gilneas. My understanding is that they were originally formed to eradicate the Scourge, a noble enough cause. But their zealotry has caused them to turn on any who did not join their crusade. Being infiltrated by dreadlords does no favors to any organization. And the Scarlet Crusaders have time and time and time again tried to eradicate the world of what they perceive as abominations. Monsters, scourge, driven so far into zealotry that they can no longer distinguish between friend or foe. An enemy that proves to be incredibly hard to get rid of and already causing the Forsaken some grief during their Heritage Armor questline. What is this? Forsaken? Calm yourself, Gen. Tess is with them. Surely they have reason to be here. Tess, what are they doing here? Tess Greymane is the daughter of Gen and Mia, heir to Gilneas, and while we didn't see a lot of development in the story for her family ties, she did play critical roles in the defense of Azeroth. Not shying away from the battlefield, often though preferring to strike from the shadows, she was a member of the Uncrowned, the Rogue Order Hall back in Legion, same as Lillian Voss. She fought for reclaiming Darkshore for the Night Elves, and answered the call when Alex Raza needed aid on the Dragon Isles. Now the topic of her taking over from her father, it did come up during the Worgen Heritage Armor questline, in which Tess thought that she needed to become Worgen herself, be infected with their curse in order to really understand what it took to lead their people. Ultimately realizing that there was more to the Gilneans, that they were not defined by their curse and held on to who they are in spite of it, their people were not merely Worgen, they are Gilnean. They are here to help us retake Gilneas, father. They are the reason we were driven out! Have you forgotten? Gen, it's Kalia. Kalia Menethil, not some mindless scourge. Let her speak. The Forsaken know the Scarlet Crusade better than anyone, King Greymane. You have little reason to trust us, but I give you my word. As a Menethil, we only wish to return what rightfully belongs to you. Tess, every time I look at them, I see your brother's face. I can't. I'm sorry. But, perhaps you can show me the way. Stay. What are your orders? I will gather the Forsaken forces. Good luck. Lillian and I will meet you in the city. Be careful. Trust her, Gen. She knows what she is doing. I know. Kalia leads the Forsaken army in the distracting assault to the north. Being undead will draw the Scarlets like moths to a flame. Interestingly enough, despite once upon a time unleashing it upon the Worgen, despite someone like Garrosh being against it, the Forsaken are once again trying to throw their plague into the city. The Scarlets are holding up light shields preventing the city from being devastated, and the Forsaken have learned how to clean up the plague again, but you have to wonder what the Gilneans think of these tactics. Either way, remember that whole bit about seeing everybody as corrupted? In the light, they shall be purified. 
even the corpses of the fallen are not spared. So, once again, it is time to eradicate some of the scarlets. On the body of Consecrator Hanas, we find a note signed by Fairbell. Fairbell was one of the scarlets that ran away during the Forsaken Heritage quests. The orders are in line with what we've come to expect. Set up a base, purge them all in the light, burn away the bestial taints. I've had people ask why the light would respond to arguably vile deeds, but the light, it does not concern itself with right or wrong. The light responds to conviction, something that the zealots of the Scarlets possess in abundance. Ah, you're here. Good. Celestine of the Harvest, a worgen druid that had been with us since the very beginning, stands with Gen and a whole bunch of dead scarlets in front of the secret tunnel. The secret tunnel that once provided our escape from the city. It is such a secret tunnel that it can just grant us access back in, provided that you don't mind scaring away some vermin. Meanwhile, Celestine flies out and warns the Forsaken to watch for our signal. Need any daggers? I brought spares. Thanks. Can never have enough. Need any poisons? Couldn't hurt. Me at least. Lillian, are you alright with this? You were once part of the Scarlet Crusade. These people mean nothing to me. And the moment I died, I meant nothing to them. But thank you for asking. Let's get started then. Once inside, we work together to make some tactical strikes, reduce the scarlet numbers, and gather some explosives, which always come in handy. The city's chapel seems to have the most elite of their forces. Odds are, that is where we'll find their leader. Let's throw open those gates, bring in the true mighty Gilneas, and take the city back. The Mighty Gilneas is supported by a whole lot more races than just the Worgen, from a once walled off city to a diverse army. After killing some more Scarlets and putting those explosives to good use, it is time to take on Inquisitor Fairbell. Their portrait already mentions that this is probably not going to be the last time that we see the Crusade. Your people are not welcome in my kingdom! Filth! Heretics! Your kind no longer belong in human lands! May you see the truth of the light in the beyond. No! I refuse to see to any of you monsters! The light will purge your infectious stain from this world! The only monster here is you! Completely taken by the holy light, Ferbel transforms into a monstrosity. A light elemental casting wake of ashes and dropping holy pools on the ground. Again, conviction matters more than intent. But Fairbell shows that being overtaken by the light is definitely a possibility. But the light is with me. We, we did it. It's over. It is. And as promised... The Forsaken will take our leave. This land is yours, as it should be. Yes, as it should. Tess, meet me outside. I have something to discuss. <sighs> You're thinking of Liam again, aren't you? You always could see right through me. You never really healed after you lost him. After you lost Gilneas. Oh, Tess. I... I see you, father. Always hiding from your pain. It's why you built that wall in the first place. And why you took Anduin under your wing. But I have always been here. For you. Even if you've never noticed. I know. And... I'm sorry. The world is changing, Tess. 
and as much as I try, I find it hard to change with it. But you have proven yourself a thousand times over, my girl. And this kingdom now belongs to you. Father, I... I... You have always been what makes Gilneas truly special to me. And I should have told you that every day. I wish I could take your pain away. Only time will do that, my dear. But we have time now. Thanks to you. Aren't you going to stay and celebrate, Father? In due time. First, there is someone I need to visit. Of course. The keys to the kingdom are handed over to the next generation. Not the only change of leadership to be seen within Siege of Renul. Alliance members are then asked by the new queen to go check up on Gen, make sure he's alright, while the Horde reports back to Lillian Voss, and report back to Queen Kalia. Thank you for your assistance, my friend. I know I asked much of you in aiding the Gilneans. I only hope that Tess continues to prove more diplomatic than her father. I know her well. She cares far more about what people do than what they are. Still... It's probably best if we give the Gilnean some space for the time being. Let them enjoy their homecoming. As they allowed the Forsaken to do, not too long ago. We've kept our word. It's time we returned home as well. I don't know if you would recognize me, Liam. All these years, the lessons I've learned, the Alliance, has always offered an outstretched hand. There are days it feels right, and days I wonder, what if I had not built that wall? Would Lordaeron still stand? Would you still be? Ah, but listen to me. The ruminations of an old man you did not live long enough to regret, as I do. Your sister will lead the kingdom now. No one could be more proud of her than your mother and I. Except, perhaps, you. Rest well, my son. Gilneas is in the best of hands. Time will tell what this passing of the torch is going to look like for the story. Gen is not going to disappear and will still play an advisory role, but to the forefront, there is this next generation. Time will tell what form the rebuilding of Gilneas, which can now truly begin, is going to take. I'm hoping and expecting that, like the new home for the Night Elves, we'll see Gilneas grow, be filled up over time. You can already use it as an RP location with the option of sending away some of the NPCs. Time will tell, all of that is future talk. In this moment, our rewards are a new mount and a new transmog set, with Worgen players getting one more specific toy. At Liam's grave, they can pick up a memorial bouquet, Tess's Peace Bloom, which is a hearthstone which will teleport you right back here into the city. A callback to the comics, to a time in which Tess was a little girl, and Gannett told her that she had to find one beautiful thing every day, that it would make the hard days easier. And she found a beautiful thing today, amidst the ruins and chaos that Gilneas was going through, even amongst all that destruction, she still found something which gave her hope, the gift that she had passed on to her father. Walking around the city, you can find NPCs of the past holding on to hope themselves, ready to rebuild what was lost. I've checked out the city myself, and the wonderful Porter Gage also posted their findings on Twitter. That said, if I missed any of the NPCs, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. From what we found, there is Celestine of the Harvest, of course. Once more, stepping up to the fray, as he has done time and time again since the Cataclysm. It's been some time since he stepped foot into the Black Vault. Taldoren seems to have survived as well as it could. Taldoren being that great tree under which Worgen, they underwent their ritual of balance. I've heard many a story of this place from the Kaldorai. 
History goes as deep as the tree's roots here. Still, it needs help much as any other tree. I intend to keep it thriving. Marcus returns home, once having to suffer the cruelty of the forsaken. Enslaved and put to hard labor until they died, he was one of the few to escape, while his wife was not so lucky. Now he's amazed that his clothes are still here. That's my favorite shirt. I think they'll be needing another wash before I put them on again, though. Lord Huel refused to join Lord Godfrey's plans of betraying Gen. Stormglen has plenty of work still to be done before we can consider it fully repaired. Only then will I return to my manor. And speaking of Godfrey, you can fish up his glasses from the canals. Tobias Miss Mental, brother to Stalva Miss Mental, one of the most famous and disturbing stories in all of Warcraft. This is where it all started for me, when the feral Worgen attacked. When we broke out of their prison, we lost so many people during those days. Sean, Vincent, at least Crowley is still here, stubborn old goat. I don't think anything could kill him. Speaking of Lord Darius Crowley, to be back here, after all this time, it feels good. But it also reminds me of how many people we lost in the Worgen attacks, then the Forsaken attacks, and have lost since. So many empty homes. His daughter Lorna hasn't seen her father this emotional since. She doesn't even know when. I hope this peace for Gilne is lost. And then Krennan Aranus, a brilliant royal chemist who saved Tess's life at birth and helped with treating the Worgen curse. They now have a lot to do. Soil samples, wildlife samples. I can finally explore the northern parts of Gilneas to see what else we can learn about the Worgen curse. Future content and story development for the Worgen, perhaps? One can only hope. Grandma Wall will absolutely talk your ears off, as Grandma does. And finally, we've got the Hammonds family. Their farmsteads, invaded by the Forsaken and wrecked by the Cataclysm. This isn't their old home in Duskhaven, that's for certain. But still, it's nice that the children have come together to help them rebuild. They've got the work cut out since the place is really fallen into disrepair. But nothing time and a bit of hard labor can't fix. Time, as Gannett told us, they now have to come home to rebuild, to heal and grow further within a city that no longer just belongs to the Gilneans. The walls have truly come down as the Alliance and Horde walk side by side through the streets. Once Gilneus has been reclaimed, it will need to be rebuilt. I wonder if those Defias fellows are still available. And that's where we'll wrap up this story on retaking Gilneus. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. Stay tuned if you want more details on all the things we talked about today, or you just want to read up on it in your own time, then check out the related WoW article in the description down below. As for me, subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time, see ya!